let's do a basic configuration of a Cisco ASA firewall from scratch. In most cases, when you unbox a Cisco firewall, the first thing you do when you unpack your Cisco firewall is to connect your machine to the console port of the firewall. The console port is a serial port running 9600 bouts. Most firewalls are shipped with a light blue flat cable that is connected to the console port of the firewall, and the other end is a DB9 serial port that you connect to your serial port of your computer. However, I don't think you have a serial port on your computer today, so you need to get a USB to serial port adapter, USB to RS-232, to connect your COM port on your machine to the console port of the firewall. In this lab environment, I run a virtual firewall. This is called an ASA V. It's a virtual Cisco ASA. It has all features of a physical firewall, but it runs virtual. In my case, I run this under VMware Fusion. The only limitation about this firewall right now is that I have no license. It is limited in throughput, and I get these warnings on the screen all the time. But except for that, it's a fully working firewall that I can use for a lab or a education purposes. So I run ASAV under VMware Fusion, and this is what I do here. In this case, I have just rebooted the firewall. Just to show you, I can reboot it again. I use the command write erase to delete the current configuration. Now I wipe everything in the firewall, and there's no startup config when I boot the firewall. I use the reload command to restart the firewall without any configuration. This is exactly how it looks when you unpack your firewall and connect it to your console port for the very first time. It takes a few seconds to reboot the device. The firewall has rebooted and it is without any configuration. The screen here is a bit blurry, but that's just because I'm using a maximize the VMware Fusion. I will do the minimum effort in VMware Fusion and then I will connect from remote and then I will do rest of the configuration from a terminal window. What I want to do in this case is to configure two interfaces, one inside and one outside of the firewall. I will use the gig 0 slash 0 interface as the outside and the gig 0 slash 1 as inside. When I get to this prompt, I know that I am not in enable mode and I need to enter an enable password to get into the enable mode. Enter enable and press enter. And actually there is no default enable password, so I just press enter at the password prompt and I get into the firewall. To get into the configuration mode, I use the configure terminal command, conf t. This error message here, or this question, you will only see that once, and that's a question if you want to send anonymous information to Cisco regarding this device. I choose no here. So I start with configuring gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. It's the outside interface, and I set the name if outside, and I set an IP address of 10.192.168.200. That's the outside IP address. In this case, the outside is connected to my lab network, so it's a private IP, but here you can have any public IP if you connect it directly to the internet. You can also use DHCP set route to get the IP address automatically from a DHCP server. But I want it like this, and I want to set security level zero, which was already put there by default, so I don't need to do that. I do a no shot of the interface, then I go to gig zero slash one. I use the name if command name if inside, and I get the security level 100 by default, so it's fine. Next step is set an IP address 10.0.0.1 and 255.255.0 netmask. I did a mistake up here. I forgot to set the netmask of the outside interface, and I need to do that. I want to do 10.192.168.200 with a mask, 255.255.255.0. That's a good example of an error message you can get. It failed to set an IP address of 10.0.0.1 on the inside because I already had an IP address starting with 10 on the outside. By default, all 10 IP addresses are with a slash 8, 255.0.0.0, class full. They were in the same subnet. For a router, which if I will is, you cannot have two interfaces in the same subnet. So I set the IP address in the net mask of the outside interface. Let's see what it looks like. Show run int gig zero slash zero, and I set IP address 10.192.168.200.255.255.255.0, int gig zero slash one, no shot, IP address 10.0.0.1.255.255.255.0. Show run int shows us the interface part of the configuration. 
see that gigabit zero slash zero is the outside security level zero and it has the proper IP address. Gig zero slash one is the inside security level 100, that IP address I want to have there. The interface part is done. Next step is to make sure that I can connect remotely to the device. I want to use SSH for that. I start by configuring and creating the crypto keys. Crypto key gen RSA mod 1024. That creates RSA keys. In this case, I already had them, so I create new ones. After that, I use the SSH command to specify which devices or IP addresses are allowed to connect remotely with SSH to the firewall for management purposes. In this case, I want to enable access from the outside because I connect from the outside in my lab environment, in my topology. So I say SSH 10192.168.0. That's the subnet directly connected to the outside interface of the firewall. I specify outside. SSH 10192.168.0 with a CMask on interface outside are allowed to connect with SSH. And I want to create a username. Cisco password Cisco privilege 15. So I create a username with the password Cisco with full access to everything in the device. And I use the command AAA authentication SSH console local with large letters. It says that when someone connects with SSH, they will be authenticated with the local usernames and password. That's the user Cisco with password Cisco. Now that we have done the basic configuration from the console, we will continue on doing the rest of the configuration from a remote SSH session.